Victor. All right, so I got 20 minutes and I gotta go over my objection obliteration crash course with you guys. So I gotta take 20 years of objection handling and cram it down in about 20 minutes. So you guys up for a ride? All right, so if you guys have never heard me speak before, I speak very quickly, about 150 miles an hour with gusts up to about 250. So if I go too fast and you can't catch this, what I want you guys to do is just raise your hand and then Ray and Fernie will come by and they'll take your credit card and they'll start charging you for a recording copy. I'm just kidding. Who is this crazy character who's bald and shiny? Please don't look directly into the light. It will blind you partially. It will recover, I promise. Who is Greg Gomez III? So real briefly, I've been online coaching since 2003. I've helped over 40,000 network marketers come through my system system and learn how to do things the way that I do things. This is one of my first, look, I had hair. I forgot I had hair. Check it out. That's nice. Um, so this is one of my first websites. I had some of the ugliest websites before they had these real fancy dancy website makers for you guys. I had to learn how to do this stuff all through HTML and Frankensteining websites together back in 2003. Uh, prior to that, I built and managed several eight-figure telemarketing firms. Uh, and in several instances, I built multi-million dollar teams in under six months. That became my forte. That's what I was known for. That's what I consulted for. Uh, I do very little consulting now because uh, it takes a lot of my time. And that's not my main focus now. But my clients have included Ted Thomas, who is a tax lien and tax deed specialist, if you guys haven't heard of him. Big, awesome direct response marker, probably one of the best old school guys I've seen. There's a guy by the name of Joe Polish. I actually worked in his uh, phone room for a bit on a hiatus from one of my business opportunities that I made. And uh, heard this guy is a rock star to carpet cleaners. I'm all, what is that? So I went in, learned about direct response marketing from Joe. and. Uh, quickly built a process that outproduced the rest of his sales team combined, and basically I was the guy that did most of his stuff. Uh, anybody here of Jonathan Budd? I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this little guy. Okay, so a couple of you. Yeah, he's, hello, hello, my friends, that kind of thing. Um, Jonathan, I've worked with him on some stuff and set some stuff up. All right. And a ton of other eight-figure telemarketing firms you never heard of. I'm not going to go through it. Point of it is that uh, I think probably one of my crowning achievements was that I was the first ever, no excuses, expert of experts, which was really awesome. So... Uh, Appreciate that, it was really cool. It was voted by last year's attendees, so really appreciate that, thank you. So in short, I rock, so let's move forward. All right, that's enough about me. Let's start talking about you guys. So here's the big problem with what you've been taught about objection handling. Uh, I'm probably gonna go against the grain of a lot of traditional training when it comes to sales. Uh, I have a really rigorous, uh, hard process that I hold salespeople to, uh, and here's what it is. You guys are building teams. How many people here are building teams? Network marketing organizations, affiliates, whatnot. All right, you guys don't be embarrassed. I'm not gonna call out you by name. Um, the key thing you guys need to realize here is that when you are building a team, you need to give them strategies and techniques and tools that they can actually be effective with, all right? I don't know if you guys have ever had this situation, but when I first got started, I had a really charismatic upline. He was really good at objection handling and sales and all of that stuff. And he gave me some lines on, here's how you overcome, is this one of them pyramid things? This is what you say, rah, rah, rah. Right? And he said it out for me and says, oh, you mean like your job kind of thing, right? And I tried using that and it blew up in my face. I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. Anybody here use a rebuttal or a line that your upline gave you and it just didn't work for you the way that they used it? They made it look so easy, right? All right, so what's the problem? Old techniques, we're still, we're still, man, come on, we're still doing stuff that was taught like 50 years ago. Really? Okay, you gotta understand that our marketplace has become much more sophisticated when you walk into a department store and you go in there specifically to buy something and the attendant asks you, can I help you find something? What do you say? Just no, thank you. I'm just looking, right? We, we need help. We want to find it. Instead, we're going to go fumble around because we don't want to deal with that sales. We, we have sophisticated sales resistance. So these old techniques have become ineffective and bottom line is they're still personality based. And the challenge is if you don't have a lot of confidence getting started, especially using the phone, that becomes more difficult to be effective with. You guys agree with that? Does that make sense? Okay. Here's one of the biggest reasons why these things don't work. Objection handling strategies that are taught from back in the day, they don't uncover a prospect's real issue, their confusion, or their concern. It's designed to give a real witty or smart aleck comment or response to something that's real. They have a real concern. They have a real issue. They have a real fear. If you don't deal with that, you're not really getting the sale. You're not getting them to buy in and you're not getting them to take massive action once they are in. 
You guys get the importance of that? Do you just want them to sign up transactionally today, or do you want them to take action on your team and build a massive organization? Which do you prefer, right? Number two, right? Okay, so let's, how do you do that? So what's the solution, Greg? Well, it's simple. It's my patented eight-step objection handling process, of course, sillies. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that here today. But before we do, I gotta teach you some mindset. I gotta keep going. I got tons of jokes I wanna tell you guys I can. I was told you gotta do this whole stand-up routine. I don't have time. All right, so mindset, first off, we gotta go through this. How do I get people to buy? This is a common question I get asked. How do I get people excited about my products, my services? How do I get them to a hotel meeting? How do I get them to, how do I get them to, how do I get them to, right? How do I make them do stuff? Okay, as Jedi influence as a lot of people think that I like to have, you know, nickel to George Lucas or Disney, whoever owns them now, um, you can't get people to do things they don't want to long term. They have to have an innate want, need, and desire for what it is you have to promote. If you're focused on selling what we want to sell, like most sales trainings are teaching you, and not what our prospects want to buy, you're doing the wrong thing. Here's the more important key. It's not about why or what they want to buy, it's why do they want to buy it. You understand this? Because the service, the product, the opportunity in and of itself is worthless, guys. It's irrelevant until you can apply that product, service, or opportunity to how it's going to impact their life. And you can't really do that until you figure out what their wants, needs, and goals are. All right, so let's move forward. Oh, man, got to speed along. Got to go, got to go, got to go. All right, so if you want a path to resistance-free recruiting and selling, you got to learn that your reasons to make a sale are usually irrelevant to your prospect. The only thing that matters is the truth behind your prospect's desires. Got it? Moving on. Here's the truth. The most effective way i found to overcome your prospect's concerns, fears, and skepticisms is, drum roll please, seek the truth behind their concerns, their fears, and their skepticisms. I call it truth seeking, right? How many people here want to learn how to find the truth behind your prospect's desires, wants, and needs, and get more sales with less resistance and be able to make more money starting today? Come on, you should all be round up and shot. That was terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, how many do you guys want to make more money? Let's go, come on. All right, that's it. All right, so here's the eight steps. I'm just going to give it to you. Write it down. Number one, acknowledge. Hi, how are you? Excellent. Number two, take away. Do it softly, though. Don't hurt them. Please hammer. Number three, redetermine interest. Number four, set aside. Number five, isolate times two. Rebuttal is number six. Number seven is comprehension question. Step eight is close, close, close. Text it. I'll give it to you guys here in a little bit. All right. So steps one through four are the setup. In martial arts, half of the battle is won in setting up the technique. It's not the actual technique itself so much as the setup. It's the distance. It's the gauge. It's the timing. It's all this other stuff. Have Fernie demonstrate for you. He's awesome. All right. So these first four steps are all about the setup. So the step number one is acknowledge. Okay, whoa, let's go back there. I'm gonna have to read this. So the point of acknowledging is to acknowledge the prospect's concern. And what you're really looking for is empathy, not sympathy. I always get these two mixed up, but here's the way I was explained it. Empathy means I see somebody vomiting over the side of a boat, right? Fun stuff. And I go over and I say, oh man, I'm sorry you're feeling that way, right? Where sympathy is I feel exactly like them and I start throwing up on the side of the boat with them, right? You don't want to buy their excuses. You don't want to buy into that. But you definitely have to acknowledge where they're coming from, what's causing those issues. It gets them to open up. When you talk to somebody, a counselor or a friend or a family member, how many people here know somebody that just never stops talking about themselves, right? We all know those people. Put your hand down if you know me and you're referencing me, please. All right. Nobody likes that. We like talking to people who listen to us, right? Okay. So here's an example. I can certainly see why you would feel that way. I get it. I totally get it, All right? I completely understand why you might feel that way. Don't get confused on the words. Look at the meaning behind it. Choose your own words. Don't let my clumsy words fall out of your mouth clumsily. <laughs> Figure something out that works for you. But the point of it is I get it. I see where you're coming from, okay? I, I, I can see what that, why that would happen or why you would feel that way. All right. Step two, take away. Do this softly. Gently take control from your prospect by being okay with them not getting started. This is the biggest thing you have to try to do as a marketer. This was the hardest lesson for me to learn because I wanted them to buy. We want them to buy. Please buy my stuff. I got to pay a car. I got to make my house payment. I really want to be successful. I want to fire my boss, right? Irrelevant. You have to be totally okay with walking away and not getting the sale. Because if they sense desperation in you, guess who's not getting the sale? Oh. Right? 
Relief pressure sells resistance when you take it away. This creates more desire for your product service because you aren't willing to chase your prospect for the deal. This is relaxed leadership, right? We're attracted to people who aren't chasing us around. They're kicking back, being cool, drinking at the bar, sipping Patron, right, Fernie and Ray? And that's where we want to be. We want to be at the cool kids club, right? They're not chasing us around saying, hey, check out how cool I am. Check out how cool I am, right? Like my status on Facebook. All right. So here's an example. And keep in mind, it's not mandatory you take advantage of this. I'm not here to twist your arm into losing weight or saving money or getting into a cell phone service that's going to be able to save you money on your taxes later on, travel expenses, et cetera. It's just that. Well, let me go back because I want to make sure we're clear on that. It's just that. We don't stop there. We definitely say, look, it's totally cool. You don't want it? No worries. I'm not here to twist your arm into getting it done. It's just that. Because if you stop there, they're going to, okay, cool, I'm done. It's just that. We'll move on to the next point. Number three, redetermining interest. You need to identify whether your prospect still has a desire for your product or your service. This also creates another yes. I didn't have time to talk about yes momentum here, guys. You want a series of five to seven yeses before you ask for a commitment. I've proven this in my phone rooms, as meticulous as these uh, internet guys are, which I am too, about testing headlines and positioning of graphics and where the opt-in form is and how it specifically needs to say what. Uh, I do the same thing with words and phone rooms. I have done that, and I have tested these things over a million soliciting phone calls myself. And the bottom line is, is you get a series of five to seven yeses before you ask for a commitment, you're more likely to get that commitment. You guys get that? Yes. 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 Thank you, Greg. Bobblehead. Okay. This also creates another yes for your NLP. Normally, they will come back with, I do, it's just that. So let's go through this process. When we spoke before, you know, hey, it's not mandatory you do it, it's just that. When we spoke before the conference call, you seemed very interested in learning how to, you know, your unique selling proposition. Save money, make more money, lose weight, look sexier in a suit like Ray, right? Whatever your product or service does, hey now. Is that still correct? Is that something that you still want to do? Now, you have to be honest here. Don't do this cheesily like, hey, you want to, you know, breathe oxygen tomorrow. You don't want your kids to die tomorrow, right? Rah. Lame. Come on. Really? Give them something legit. You said you wanted to do this. Is that still true? It's okay if you don't. Is that still something you want to do? Though? Yeah, it is. It is. But. Bleh. And they're going to cough up the real objection. Write that point down. Make a point of that. This is when they give you the truth. This is when the truth comes out, typically. I got seven minutes, let's go. Now we gotta set it aside. What we do with the set aside is we diffuse the objection by confidently insinuating that the issue can be resolved easily. That's such a good word, insinuating. We don't get to use that often enough in conversation. I like that word. Hi, I'm insinuating that uh, we go back to the bar and have a couple of drinks. Okay, so purpose of this is it diffuses the objection by confidently insinuating that the issue can be resolved easily. And you don't have to pay it any attention. You just do it. You say, okay, set that aside for a second. Right, I'll give you the example. Let me read my own slides. Okay, I understand that, but let's assume that I can show you a way to get around that. Okay, set that aside. I get what you're saying. Put that aside for a minute. All right? Just, we got it. I see it. Let's put it right here. Put a pin in it. All right? Now, it's not going anywhere. And we move on to the next piece. All right. So now that we've set it up, we've done, this first four pieces are specifically about making sure we've gotten to the real issue, the real concern, the real objection. Step five through eight, this is where we actually get the close. This is where everybody wants to jump to. Can I just, you know, kiss her? No, you gotta wine and dine her first. You gotta ask her out. Gotta make sure you talk about her father and all that good stuff, right? So here's where we get to the close. This is where the kissing happens. Step number five, now we isolate. We gotta do this twice. This helps to ensure that what you're doing is you're dealing with the real issue before you commit to using up a rebuttal. You guys gotta understand, you got two or three shots at closing a sale. You can ask many more times, but realistically, we don't wanna be that person that badgers somebody into a sale, right? We don't wanna look like a telemarketer. We don't wanna sound like a telemarketer or a pushy salesperson. So the window is about two to three times asking for the sale, okay? This also helps ID any other potential threats that might be looming just below the surface. Look, just because they told you it's the money does not necessarily mean it's the money. Let me say that again, because that's probably one of the most important things you will ever hear in your business career. Just because they tell you it's not the money or that it is the money or that they need to talk to somebody, that doesn't mean normally that that's what really the issue is. It's that they're scared, they're terrified, and they're skeptical. You need to be a strong enough leader to get them to open up and tell you the truth. If you can't do that, you're wasting your time. You're wasting their time. 
okay? This also commits a prospect to if a uh, situation. If I do this, would you be willing to do that? So if I could do this, would you do that? Oldest closing technique in the world. Works real well. Here's an example. This one's long. Would there be anything else that would stop you from getting started tonight? So, okay, set that aside. Would there be anything else that would stop you from getting started or help stop you from getting started tonight? They say, well, yes, there would be. It would also be this thing. Okay. Set that aside. What else would stop you from getting started tonight? Now, they may come up with a couple of them. If they're doing this, they're looking for ways to be able to put you off. And if you keep doing this with them, eventually what will happen is they'll run out of stuff. And they'll say this. Listen, this is a truth indicator from the beginning. <sighs> you know what it really is. When you get that sigh, ding, 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 that's usually truth. You got it? Subtle, and if we're not listening and we're thinking about the next thing we're going to say to combat their objection or rebuttal or whatever it is, you're, you're not paying attention to the, the money. It's a bag filled with cash waiting for you to pick it up. You've got to listen, okay? So back to this. You repeat this process to all objections are on the table. Usually the last one's the real objection, sigh. What it really is is blah, blah, blah. Now, what, now that we've uncovered the real issue, okay? So just so I'm clear, if we can help you get this or these issues resolved, and typically you want to talk about the last issue, satisfying the prospect's issues, you're saying you want to get started tonight then, is that right? So just so I'm clear, I want to make sure I see you yawning, I get it, I know it's late, I know we got a lot of partying to get to because it is Vegas, I appreciate that, but if we can get through this content in the next three minutes, is it something you're willing to listen to un un uninterrupted, 100% un focus? Is that something you guys are willing to do? Yes? Okay, yes, I get it, I know, come on, we're in Vegas, let's go party, cool, I'm ready, all right. So if I can do that, here's what we're going to do. So step number six, we actually do the rebuttal. I've got a timer. They're literally kicking me off the stage in three minutes, so I've got to hurry up here, all right? So what's a rebuttal? Everybody thinks that this has to be some magical concoction of words that's going to ultimately open up their wallet and just dump tons of cash on you, right? No, that's not it. You're ultimately looking for just a simple, provide a clear, simple, and concise answer to their specific issue. That's it. It doesn't have to be miraculous. It has to just be simple and clear that they understand it. You've already solved the objection simply by asking and uncovering the truth. Once you've done that, you've gone 90% of the way that no other marketer has gone with them. How many times do you see, and I'm, I'm not bashing on anybody, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but when I see people on Facebook or on the internet saying, you know, never call in a prospect, I think to myself, thank you. You know why? How many people like to actually get a phone call? How many people want to be, have their questions answered? How many people want to be directed on how to do something, right? That's my marketplace. Thank you, right? It's not about the way you want to sell. It's the way the people want to buy. So give them that option. Not, not for everybody. I'm just saying it's the way I like to cook my bacon. Hey, I like it. All right. It doesn't have to be rock sense. It has to be effective. In fact, the simpler you keep it, the better. Minute 45. Here we go. Wow. Again, X number of dollars is a lot of money, but that's exactly why this program is for you. You see, with as much, okay, here's for you, travel folks. With as much traveling as you've been doing uh, and plan to do over the next year, it's not really a question of if you're going to spend the money. You already are. You're spending that money right now. The challenge is you're spending it over and over again in the form of higher travel charges that you actually don't need to pay. See, this way, for that one time or small monthly investment or whatever your fee is, you're going to be able to save up to 30% on all of your travels this year. It's like you're getting paid to do what you would be doing anyways, right? Even better, the more you travel, the more you save, and ultimately it's like you're getting some of your trips for free. Is that something you would want? Again, not, you don't have to do it. I'm not here to force it down your throat. Got one minute. Here we go. Step seven, comprehension question. I'll have to go through these really quickly. This is a question that confirms that your prospect understands your rebuttal and gets a yes answer. All right, got to get yeses. I talked about neuro-linguistic programming a bit ago. Does that make sense? Do you see how that works now? Is that clear? Is that fair? Do you guys understand these? Thank you for proving my example. All right. Oh, we got to speed up. Note. That's a big note. Make sure you get a firm yes. Uh-huh or okay. Okay. It's typically not good enough. If you didn't get a firm yes, are you sure you understand this first name? You don't sound 100% clear. Are you sure you get this? Let me say it again so I can make sure you're 100% clear. Right? Get a firm yes from your prospect at this stage, because if not, go back and handle the objection. Because if you have happy ears and you just move forward from there, and that's it, you don't really deal and uncover the real issue, you're going to get an objection later on that sounds like this. I need to think about it. Oh, ch -ch -ch -oh. Right? Just, that's terrible. That sells Harry Carey. Okay. 
If you still don't get it, repeat the rebuttal. Do it a little bit slower this time. Sometimes hearing the same information twice is enough to let it sink in and they can actually get it. You don't have to create something new or fancy. Step eight, close, close, close. You got a direct close, pretty straightforward. Uh, one that directly tells your prospect to grab payment. And let's get going. Cool. Which card are we using? Visa or MasterCard, American Express or Discover? Awesome. I'll wait here. Go get it. All right? Uh, I just said that. Wonderful. How did you want to get this going today? Was that uh, with a Visa or MasterCard? Simple, direct. There's no, there's no dancing around with it. It's, you're ready to go party. Trial close. These are actually what I prefer to use. A close that asks for a small bit of info prior to going for payment. If prospect says yes to this first trial close, then you're most likely to get an agreement to go to the second amount or the dollar amount to get them started. So, for example, how did you, this is my famous one. Everybody knows that I use this one. How did you want your name to appear on your paperwork? Was it first and last name or do you have a middle initial that you wanted to use? Got it? Cool. Did I, can I answer any more questions for you? No, that's it. Awesome. Great. How did you want your name to appear on your paperwork? Is it first and last name or you have a middle initial? How do you like that to look? Well, I want it to look like this. Great. What are we using now? Then I go to the direct close. Hard takeaway and final close approach. If they resist you twice, if your first two attempts did not work, you shot two guns, two bullets out of your marketing gun, right? You got one last one. This is how you set it up. This is called the hard close. This is as hard as I like to get. Well, you know I am. This is to be used if you get resistance from the, two, the second close attempt. Hard takeaway. Yeah, we get it. Come on. <laughs> you know John. You know John. I'm not sure if this is for you. Right, let me do it correctly. You know, John, I don't know if this is for you. This program is going to require a level of commitment to get the results that we're talking about, but you don't seem that excited about this. It's okay if you don't want it. Is this really something that you really want to do, or are you totally fine with where you are right now? Okay? It's, and it's cool, man. Don't worry. If you don't want it, it's not for you. I'm not trying to twist your arm. What do you want? Oh, you know what I really I want this. Okay. Whatever the really issue is then. All right. I got to get off the stage. Close, last chance, we already did that. Um, handle objection as described above, move to the final direct close, and you got it. That's basically how that close works, all right? Common examples, I don't have time to give you. I was gonna give these to you. I don't have the money. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my spouse. There's something more I can read. Is there something you can send me in the mail? Can you call me tomorrow? No. <laughs> Is this one of them pyramid things? Come on now, tell me the truth. How much are you making right now? How much are you making with this fin-fangled opportunity, right? Um, these are my closing thoughts. You like that? Isn't that clever? I came up with that all by myself. Okay. When you seek your prospect's truth, you start down a path that eliminates nearly 80% of the objections or obstacles your prospect can raise. More important, you empower your prospect to learn a better, more effective way to deal with future objections that they're going to face. Guys, you model and teach your kids by what you do, not what you say. Same rules apply to your associates. Do you understand this? Sorry, Blake. There you go. Thank you, guys. For a free 10-day online recruiting bootcamp and to dive deep into rejection-free sponsoring methods, use the internet, click the link above, or go directly to EliteMarketingPro.com forward slash go. I'll see you there.